Welcome in everyone, I'm Slayer. Today we're going to discuss the mod Theme Mixer by TPB. Theme Mixer is a mod for City Skylines that unlocks a ton of opportunities for you to customize your city. It can give each of your cities its own distinct personality. With Theme Mixer, you're able to incorporate different ground textures, watercolors, LUTs, and much more to customize your city in a way that's far beyond just selecting a map and a theme. With this mod, we're actually taking different themes, mixing them together and creating a city that meets your vision. If you enjoy the video or find it helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Also leave a comment if you have a suggestion for the next video and be sure to check us out at twitch.tv slash slay3k. First, let's talk about what a theme is. A theme is essentially a package, typically downloaded with a map that provides your map with textures. For example, a theme may include specific grass textures and water textures, and this may be factored in with the map for whatever region the map is in. So for example, one map may include a theme with white sand for a tropical island, whereas you may have a darker sand for a map placed somewhere else in the world. With multiple themes downloaded, you can use Theme Mixer to then blend them together, creating your own vision. After clicking the Theme Mixer icon and navigating to the top of the pop-out window for themes, you'll then be able to see the list of themes you've downloaded from the Steam Workshop. Now, I would recommend downloading just a few themes that you find or just holding onto a small inventory of them so that as you move city to city, you can adjust that theme and tailor it to wherever you want your city placed in the world. And as you can see here, just by selecting different themes, I'm changing the map quite drastically. You also have the ability to favorite a specific couple of themes so that you can go back and compare and contrast which one you prefer. I think it's important to select the theme that you can work off of, something that's maybe close to the environment you want. And then what I'll do from there is start to customize the theme with other themes. We are literally going to be mixing themes together. But before we do that, I want to discuss color correction or LUTs. This is found at the second to last tab on the theme mixer pop-out. A LUT or L-U-T stands for a lookup table. Now you may be familiar with this term if you've done any video work or video editing, maybe photography. LUTs are used to create a look across the board. So now in your city, if you're looking for something more dreary, this is how you can do that. Or if you want something to appear warm and tropical, you can use LUTs because they're going to alter the color scheme of your map and city. So depending on what your environment is or where you want your city to be located, a LUT can be really important. For example, you may want to touch on a slightly different color palette for the environment. And by using a LUT, maybe you want to add in some warmer tones. Or if you wanted to go something more dreary or where it rains a lot, maybe you want to add in a little more blue. This will complement the work you do in Theme Mixer with different textures or picking a theme itself. Much like in the Theme tab, LUTs can be adjusted on the fly. As you can see, we're transitioning through several different LUTs. It's helpful to have a few of these from the Steam Workshop that you can then utilize to create the atmosphere that you want for your city. I typically try to adjust the LUT before I go into any other aspects of Theme Mixer, just so that I see the final output of what the color scheme is gonna be, because it may affect decisions I make on different textures I wanna use. Now, before I begin mixing themes together, I want to lay out some swatches of different textures. So that way, as I'm moving through Theme Mixer, everything is in one place so I can kind of take a look at each one and compare them and see how they work out and if that kind of meets my vision for what I want to do later. So using the Mod Surface Painter, I'm going to go ahead and paint some surfaces with pavement, ruin, gravel, and field textures. And then I'm also going to plant in some resources here for ore and oil and fertile land. As you can see in the background, We've already got some cliff texture on the hill I created. Obviously, we have plenty of grass texture to look at and sand is nearby. Not to mention, it can also be helpful to have water nearby, maybe a couple buildings, and you could draw out a road or two and maybe a path, just so you can really get a feel for what this is gonna look like as you're going through the different panels of your theme mixer. All right, now we're gonna open up the second from the top panel labeled Terrain. This has a ton of different adjustments and it may be overwhelming at first. So we're gonna break it down into sections. First. If you're not familiar, there's a thing called sprites in base game cities that creates like a 3D texture of grass. I typically remove that when I'm building, but you can show or decline to show it using Theme Mixer. Now, Theme Mixer works exactly as the title states. The mod is going to mix these different themes together for each texture we have in our world. So by clicking on the box on the left of each of these different categories, so let's start with grass, for example, you can then select a grass from a different theme that you've already downloaded. So what you're seeing is me switching between different grass textures, much like I switched between themes earlier. Now from here, you can also adjust the sizing of the grass or whatever texture you choose. This is how the tiling is repetitive. You can see as I'm adjusting it, the scale of the grass is changing. 
You can also reset the value using the undo button, and you can also import different textures using that value you've already selected to compare and contrast at the tiling size you want. Consider though that sometimes when you're adjusting the tiling, you can make the grass or different textures look a little repetitive. So keep that in mind as you're adjusting the tiling size. Now each area where we can adjust the texture, all nine of these boxes that you see here, they can be adjusted in the exact same way. We can do this with cliffs, we can do this with pavement and so on and so forth. So like I said earlier, you wanna pick a base theme, then you wanna to go to the terrain panel and we wanna start picking out specific adjustments we wanna to make to different textures on our map. That's why it's helpful to have swatches of all the textures in front of you so you can see them next to each other and how they're gonna to work together. Now obviously you can get really specific because you can pick every texture you want from all the themes that you have in your collection. What's nice about this is there's a ton of flexibility here with the tiling and then all the different textures that you can update. You can really create your own environment. I tend to look at this as a way that I'm looking for stuff that works together. So if I pick like a luscious green, I might have gravel be a darker dirt. Pavement is also a really neat area to update because this is going to affect all your sidewalks. So I try to find something that's a little bit worn, but not too repetitive. I really emphasize trying to make textures that complement each other. Additionally, you can factor in assets too. Like cliffs, you might want to have them match a certain rock that you have already downloaded as an asset. Beyond that, it's about finding a type of rock or cliff texture that goes with the geographic area of the world or whatever you have in mind for your city. Keep in mind to check out the scaling option to try to cut down on how repetitive a texture may look for your cliffs. Now, oil and ore can be really, really helpful as surface painter type elements. I'm not gonna utilize these in the normal sense of like actually creating resource to, to mine or to extract. I'm using this so that I can create different textures on grass. This is similar to using gravel or ruined textures. It just creates like another color that you can use in your palette for your city. Consider if you had farms or something like that where you wanted different colors and different patches, this is an option for you. So next up is sand. Sand can be fun to adjust because it can definitely apply another geographic element to your city. If you want it to be more tropical, maybe you go with white sand. If you want it to be a different part of the world, maybe you do darker sand or sand with a tint of yellow. It can all just depend on what you're trying to create. I really like creating these tropical scenes with very light colored sand and then playing with the water to really make the sand stand out. There's a couple elements that Theme Mixer I'm not as familiar with or I don't use as often. One would be cliff and sand texture as a unit together. I think it just modifies the look of either one. I noticed more of a difference with cliffs in my experience. It's just something else to play with to try to tailor your city. Now we've discussed a lot about different land textures. Let's go to one of my favorite tabs, which is water. Water's third from the top on the theme mixer menu. And this is gonna give us the ability to change the texture of our water along with changing the colors. Water texture typically is focused on the waves or the ripples in the water and how you want those to look. You may want them to look different if it's a body of water that is connected to an ocean or a sea versus a lake or a river. Then you have water foam, which is probably more noticeable when you have something like water rapids. Next up, we have water color. Here is kind of your baseline to adjust across the board, the color of water. You can decide now if you want it to have more of a green tint, a blue tint, or maybe you want to go with something funky. So you can see there's a ton of variety because you are selecting exactly what you might want. Now keep in mind, we're gonna go to another tab that is actually gonna kind of add another layer to this, which is the underwater color tab. The underwater color is a little bit harder to define. I typically use it to adjust what the water is gonna look like when it's applied to something like sand or in more shallow water. For example, you can see on that little peninsula how the color is changing drastically. After choosing your colors, be sure to hit save. If you go back to the water tab, you'll notice one more option and that's for polluted water, which is not something I typically use because I typically don't have polluted water in my cities as an active element. But you can see here how quickly the water can become a complement to whatever you do on land in terms of textures. We've made this seem much more tropical. Maybe Florida? Now let's talk about the remaining tabs. What you're going to see here is I'm not going to go as in-depth with these tabs, partly because I have mods active and I can't change everything that you're going to see. But let's start in structures. Structures allows you to adjust road textures and certain building textures. With the upwards roads texture, you can see we can adjust the basic texture of our roads. That is gonna affect color and the cracks and wear and tear that you see on the road itself. I feel like this is probably gonna be one of the most common things to adjust in here. Now you will notice several of these themes have the same texture allotted for 
this category. That happens, especially when you get into things that are a little bit more rare to adjust. This would include some of these building texture changes. Probably the most popular out of those is going to be the building base texture, which really affects just when your building is on a different height or there's like an elevation change. It's going to adjust the bottom part of the building, but not every theme comes preloaded with its own texture for these different categories. What's helpful is that you do have the star option so you can favorite certain textures if you find one, but you're just going to have to sift through what themes you have and see what works for what you're building. Thankfully, Theme Mixer doesn't really change how it operates. Every category is very similar, so it's pretty easy to go through different textures and find stuff that works. The next tab is Atmosphere. This is one that I don't use very often. I have other mods to control these things, like Ultimate Eye Candy. But what's helpful is that you have it built in here. You can adjust the longitude, latitude of the sun, various other details of the sun, including exposure, which can actually be really helpful. This can all help your lighting during the day. But if you want to get really specific, you can start adjusting your nighttime appearance. You'll notice none of these tabs have themes you can really pull from. Instead, it's just making adjustments to what's there. If you're running a more vanilla gameplay style, you'll start to see these changes actually take an effect, especially at night with the nighttime adjustments, including the moon and colors, so on and so forth. The next tab is weather. This is another thing. If you're playing a more vanilla gameplay style or let's say less modded, for example, you may be able to see these adjustments happening a little bit more often. Because I typically have a lot of weather effects disabled, we're not really gonna see what this is gonna change, but you can see how many different options you have available to change the weather and how your city may operate. Last, but certainly not least, once you set up your theme and you have it exactly where you want, it's really, really important that you save your theme. What's helpful is Theme Mixer makes this extremely easy. You can save themes and then load them at any point. So if you had a couple that you were trying to compare back and forth, you could do that. By going down to the save area, you can type in a title, save it, and then you can load that later with the section above. Now these will carry on city to city. So I have several themes I've created in the past and sometimes I'll go back to see if those fit the mood or the desired look that I'm going for. Now I realized I didn't go as in depth with every single option. There's so much in Theme Mixer. It's a pretty heavy modification to your gameplay with the ability to just rain and the ability to adjust different textures. You can do so much. What I think is really, really critical that you look at, for example, is, is focusing on those textures, water and things like that. Making those adjustments are going to be huge for your gameplay, especially when you're going from city to city and you really just want a different look. You want to freshen up your city and really give it a personality that fits what you have envisioned. I think it's extremely important. That's something I try to do every time I start a new city is give it a look. Thankfully, the tool is relatively easy to use once you start to understand it. So I really feel like you guys can expand on what I've done here and start giving your cities an awesome personality and awesome look to fit your vision. And with that, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We also stream at twitch.tv slash slate K and below you'll see links for my different socials, including Twitter, which you can keep up with streams and what videos are coming out, as well as Discord, where we discuss city skylines amongst other games. With that, take care, everyone. See you next time.